Hollow Ballers, what's going on? It's Preacher, and let's get our basic healing guide out of the way, shall we? We've spent some time choosing our healer. We're going with the Resto Shaman for this series. Uh, we've sorted out our UI, so it should hopefully make sense to most of you by now. And now we need to actually get the fundamentals out of the way for those of you who want to get into some sort of healing, which I hope you do. Uh, healing is a wonderful, wonderful way of becoming better at being a DPS, of becoming better at tanking. That should all make sense to you now, hopefully, is understanding what those guys are doing allows you to just make better decisions overall, and you generally just become a really awesome guy to be around. And so many people want to have in your groups. So... Let's get our basics out of the way and ask, answer some questions that are most often asked to me when it comes to healing about how do I do X and Y. And also we're going to talk about your expectations of going through this series as I know many of you are kind of following along with me. I hope you all had a tremendous Christmas, by the way. I'm filming this on Boxing Day. Yeah. Uh, no boxing for me. Thank you very much. <sighs> I don't need to go shopping. So... First things first, how do we recognize a terrible healer so we can avoid doing that? One is obviously dispels. Gee, sweet Jesus Christ. For the sheer quantity of healers who don't understand that dispelling is part of their job. And in fact, we should probably discuss, in fact, what is your role? Uh, from a casual player's perspective, uh, your role is to keep people alive, right? That is your casual player's perspective. And there's nothing wrong with that. That will get you to, a, you know, a mediocre level. Uh, some guilds will still accept you because they're desperate for healers and stuff. But you're never going to be great uh, or a really cool healer if you just do that. Very similar to our tanking perspective. I'm sure many people walk into, what does a tank do? We're going to interrupt this? I'll interrupt it. Don't want that guy healing. I walked into tanking thinking, well, all I have to do is like pull the mobs and have aggro, right? That's what a tank does. But many of you now know if you followed our tanking series, which we did a couple of weeks ago, is no, there is way, way more to it than that. And once you understand that, you're like, oh, okay, there's actually loads of stuff to do here and it's really good. So... What is our healer's job? Our healer's job is can to be the emergency safety net. We have the most versatile role to play when it comes to a lot of scenarios, but we're also, and this is something you need to bear in mind once you once you start stepping into this series, is we are easily the least influential on a group. Now, I know some people probably want to argue with me about that, but hear me out. Hear me out. A good tank, as we've already demonstrated, a good tank can get people through most scenarios, right? Without much difficulty. It doesn't matter how bad the group is. A good tank can control the pace of the dungeon in such a way that they could just get them through it anyway. A really good DPSer, and I'm not just saying somebody who's overgeared and crushes the dungeon, but a really good DPSer, particularly if he's got uh, some knowledge of the instances, maybe he's got some high Mythic Plus experience, etc., etc. A good DPSer can also pretty much carry the group because... It only takes one good DPSer to know that, like, in this dungeon specifically, like, Sapantrix, or whatever the fuck his name is, to know that Sapantrix will need interrupting his rampage, when you could do with killing the ads if the DPS is low. A good DPSer can handle all those things. Healer cannot. <coughs> healer cannot. A healer, in fact, if things are going bad, like, you have a, a, a bad group, so you have a bad tank and a bad DPSer in whatever form that takes... Uh, often means your role is very, very quickly reduced into that of a spamming idiot. And there isn't much you can do about that, honestly. So just bear in mind that it can be a very, very frustrating experience. Uh, I'm talking specifically in the pug world here, uh, but we're going to talk about more about that later in Expectations. So a big way that that is demonstrated is via Dispels. So when I was a full-time healer, which was twice in the game, uh, once in vanilla for all of vanilla, uh, I was a priest. <coughs> and the next time was in the Burning Crusade, where I was a Holy Paladin. And obviously I've healed significant, significant amount of times doing guides for YouTube, which I've been doing for the last, like, four years now. Then it always comes down to dispels. And people generally come up with the question is, like, how, how do you dispel so fast? Like, they watch me do it on, you know, on the camera. And they're like, how do you do that so fast? Because... There are so many healers out there who don't know that Dispel exists in the first place, which is obviously the big sign of this guy sucks, right? So if you don't know that you should be Dispelling, that's like the big no-no. This is actually a dungeon is really good for this because uh, those guys over there are going to cast the um, Arcane Bomb thing. And the amount of times, I mean, you guys have probably seen it. You guys have probably seen people spamming in fucking group chat like please will you fucking dispel me from this thing because you have like an hour to dispel it and it's going to fucking stun me please deal with this and unfortunately people don't they don't reach out or they don't know to dispel and stuff like that so how do we manage that 
The biggest thing I'm going to teach you in the super basic guide is not to do what I just did, which is press heal the second thing spawn <laughs> or get aggro. Not that I knew they were going to aggro them. Let's get out of the static nova. Uh, is know when dispel's going to happen. Like now. Wait for it. Wait for it. There. Dispel. Look how fast my dispel was. God, I'm a good player. No. <laughs> no. All I'm doing is showing you exactly how you do this. How you become shit hot at being Mr. Dispel Kid is knowing when you're going to have to dispel. And it's that easy and it sounds super obvious, doesn't it? But it isn't to a lot of people is knowing exactly which trash and which mobs and which bosses are going to do something to your group that will require dispelling. And therefore, you're ready for it. You've got your finger at Static Nova. You ready? Ready look how good I am at the game. Oh, I dispelled the tank straight away. Oh, I'm fucking good at this game. It's really that easy. I'm being sarcastic, but you understand now, right? What I'm saying? You know... And the only time you will ever be, like, unsure is your first time in the dungeon. Like, that's it. Beyond that, your first time in a dungeon is the learning experience. This is where you're learning, like, okay, what needs dispelling in here, right? All these kind of questions. I'm going to get aggro here. Make sure we fire that over there. When do I need to be dispelling in here? What does this dungeon do? Static Nova's coming. You ready for some really good play? Is this guy going to knock me flying? I'm going to stand here. You ready for my awesome play? Oh, no one got stunned. Okay. Fine. That's cool. <laughs> but that's all it is. There's a countdown, <laughs> right? In this instance particularly, there's a countdown to when it's going to happen. I know exactly when it's going to happen. Therefore, you can just be ready with your finger on the button, right? And you apply that information and that knowledge to everything we do as a healer. Being a good healer is about knowing when problems will occur before they happen. Far more so than a tank has to deal with. Far more so... Ah, 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 ah. Uh, dude, far more so than a tank and far more so than DPS. Tanks and DPS can be very reactive. So an example would be a tank ninja, uh, somebody ninja pulls. The tank can react to that in a nice way by gathering everything together and dealing with it, highlighting his skill as a tank, right? Nice and easy. Let's interrupt our Michelle. A DPS can react to that by blowing a cooldown and DPSing the mobs appropriately or targeting something that's significantly dangerous. All these kind of things. As a healer, we need to be further ahead of that game. Not only do we need to know that perhaps there'll be a ninja pull here, but we need to know each and every single pull. Will this trash do something that could be dispelled? Can this be interrupted? So you'll notice earlier on, the large naga that were over here, I was interrupting polymorph fish. Now, polymorph fish can be dispelled, so I could easily leave it to be dispelled. But what's better for DPS? Is it better for the DPSs if I prevent them ever getting it? Are you going to stand in that whole thing? Bro, you're so brave. Um... Or I could simply stop it at the source, right? I could do that as well. Oh, we're going for it. Way bants, mate. This is going to be great. Did we clear everything? I don't think we did. Let's see what the mean ninja pull today. Now, I'm actually doing in my head what I try to teach you guys to do, which is predictive. What is going to be a problem here? Seagulls, maybe, <laughs> right? The ever-present seagulls. Uh, will the tank aggro them? I'll have to go and stand on the tank Stand on the tank if that happens. Will there be extra trash like this lovely fellow over here who's going to interject into the fight? Also, does the tank know to interrupt ra uh, Rampage? I could do that. Will the DPS attack ads? I could do that as well. Will somebody move from Toxic Wound? All these kind of things. I'm predicting what's going to happen. Why? The worst scenario you can get into as a healer is falling behind. Because when you fall behind, and the game is designed this way, if you didn't know this, uh, the game is designed so <coughs> if people play correctly, uh, for the most part, you'll be fine, right? You'll be absolutely fine. But if you take some necessary damage and then you multiply that by several people, da da da, look at him coming in, right? And multiply that by several people, that's when you start to fall behind. And unfortunately, unless you have some major cooldown, like, uh, you just love it, don't you? Ice block. <laughs> <laughs> cool <laughs> unless you have some major cooldown like i've got like you know healing tide totem things like that um once you start falling behind as a healer you're pretty fucked honestly you are pretty fucked there's not much you can do about it you're just gonna have to deal with that scenario toxic wound on me i don't want to take too much of this but i don't have spirit walkers grace so i'm gonna do some st start healing that's gonna be fine everyone's pretty low i might die here so i'm just gonna drop a healing tide totem and top myself off Nice and easy stuff. That's what cooldowns are there for. Might as well use them. I have aggro on something. Is it this thing? Yeah, this thing's up to like 14 stacks now. Look at that thing. <laughs> <coughs> 
The big uh, tip for everybody here, and this is going to just change the way you look at healing, honestly. If you've never healed in WoW or you're healing it for fun, is start learning each and every single piece of the trash. It's the same thing the tanks have to do, but they learn different ways of controlling the trash. Like, the tank focuses on controlling the trash, and we'll also obviously learn things that really hurt. If we were to sit here with a few of you and have a chit-chat, and I was to say things like, what's the, the trash packs are that really, really hurt in Legion? Right? And people will be able to sound off things. Like, uh, we would f the dogs before Fenrir, they really, really hurt. And you'd be able to resoundingly sound off things like that. And they'd be like, well, and then the better players would be like, well, on Mythic 12, things like Nightmare Bolt, or oh, Mythic 13 or 15, Nightmare Bolt can one shot you. Did you know that? It's like, no, I didn't know that. So that changes your game entirely and keeps you interested as a healer. All these kind of things are very, very cool. We're going to pull a snail. Fuck yeah, we're pulling that snail. I got you, snail. I stunned you. <laughs> Predictive. Once you know certain things are going to happen, your life as a healer becomes so much easier. So much easier. Because in a lot of cases, you have a timer, and that includes a cast bar. Look, you have a cast bar. Boom, people take damage. I knew that was coming. Why we had a fucking cast bar? I know what's going on. I don't need a boss mod for this stuff, right? This is all pretty basic stuff that you could start applying into your knowledge of healing. What this then allows you to do, as I said, the worst, the worst scenario you can be in as a healer is desperation, because when you're desperate as a healer, what you can't do is the preventative things, which is what healing's all about. Like, healing is so much better when you're preventing damage rather than trying to rescue people from the cusp of death. If I'm knowing big damage is coming, I could do things on my shaman, like put several riptides down, be ready for some chain heals, maybe get a healing rain down, maybe start pre-casting my, uh, I forget the name of this thing, the fucking healing rain bomb, the artifact skill. You know, things like that. I can start pre-casting them. I have a timer. I can have a healing stream totem going. However, when people just start getting bamboozle wrecked, I'm pretty fucked. I don't have much choice to do what, what I'm going to do here. And in fact, you fall into that thing that's a really good skill of healers is who's going to die, <laughs> right? Uh, healers will know that eventually you're going to have to pick who's going to die. And usually it's not the tank. So you're going to have to sacrifice someone to the gods or hope that they survive or do something of their own and uh, get that going there. So all I want you to do for the super basics of the guide is, one is make sure you're happy with the OI that we set up last time in whichever configuration you did it. But be predictive. Start learning what everything does. Start learning when to dispel. It's get fast with it. Get happy with it. Get really good at it. People will notice this. Very hard to get noticed as a healer. Very, very hard to get noticed as a healer. Uh, but things like that, like getting instantly dispelled, like, fuck me, that guy was on the case. And other people are like, how did you do that? And you're like, dude, there's a fucking timer. I can see a cast bar. I, it's so easy to do. It's so, so easy to do. I've got target of target. Blah, 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 blah. All these things are pretty good. All these things work out well. And also... If you find yourself uh, regularly as a healer being in a scenario where you're like, fuck, everyone's always at low health all the time. Potentially, that's because of terrible people. Seagull! Seagull! Potentially, that's because of terrible players, right? There's no getting away from that. Potentially, because of that, that's because of terrible players. Uh, but it could also be uh, because you didn't get ahead of the game because you didn't know this big damage was coming. And next time, you might tackle that a different way. You might have several heals running straight away. Where's the tank? Where did you go, bro? You're like so far away. That's crazy. You over there? What are you doing over there? Are you spinning in circles? Okay. <laughs> you do what you gotta do. I'm fine with it. <coughs> um, it could be because you fell behind and it's your fault. And it's absolutely your fault. Take your responsibility. I think uh, a lot of healers, especially the uh, bad healers, uh, like to blame every problem that is like, well, the DPS should be taking so much fucking damage, yo. Occasionally, the people need to take damage, otherwise, your role doesn't exist. There are a lot of healers out there who don't want to exist. Uh, who don't, who like want a world where they, <laughs> they're not needed, right? Does that make sense? It, it should do. On top of that, you should always be doing something no matter what healer you play. Always, always be doing something. Something. So we know here we're going to have to dispel. But you should be doing DPS. You should be doing something. If you are sat, sat with your dick in your fucking hands or whatever your lady bits are doing, not doing something constantly... You are a waste of time in my eyes, and you should be working on that, okay? It's no good being this guy who's like, I'm here part of the dungeon, but not all. Arcane bomb. Oh, dispelled it. How cool am I? Uh, so easy. There is no point in being that fucking guy. There is absolutely no point. You are designed in Legion, whether you like it or not, and maybe that's something you don't like about healings, that, oh, well, they, they want me to do damage. Yeah, they do. They want you to do something. If the healing is easy, interrupt polymorph fish, 
If the healing is easy, then you should be doing more damage. Or you can even consider... I mean, I don't want to say this in the basic guide. I'll leave that alone. But you should be doing damage. That's what you're all about. You're about doing all these things, right? You have access to everything. You should be constantly in motion, doing something, and thinking about things. So you're predictive. You're constantly doing something. And you're watching. Magic binding. Whoa, spell me. Because I'm more important <laughs> than the tank. There he goes, he's fine. <laughs> um, the next thing I really want to bring up is the idea of expectations of being a healer. Okay, so this is going to be tough. So for many of you who have jumped into this, I know several of you have already given up because of this. And I know others maybe aren't at the level yet. Uh, healing is, and you need to be aware of this before you get too deep into it. So if you're doing this just to get better as a personal player, it's fine. You won't have any much issue with this. But if you're looking to get into healing because you never tried it, you think this looks like an, a decent uh, raid viable, viable option, you might have a better chance of getting a raid spot, all those kind of things. But if you're looking to play a little bit more long-term or a little bit more seriously than what many of us are just to increase our own personal play, then you need to be aware of this before you get too far into it, is healing is the most thankless job and the most... It can be absolutely the most frustrating experience in the game. Like, bar none. Bar none. Particularly if you are playing with bad players. So I said earlier on that healers have pretty much the least influence over a successful dungeon uh, compared to, like, a DPS, -er, a really good DPS -er or a good tank, right? Okay, bomb on me. Oh, instant dispel. My god, that was fast. Um... But healers just don't have that kind of influence. Uh, an example would be this Eye of Ashara. So our first mythic that we did on our Resto Shaman, we have done some mythics on this guy, uh, was in fact Eye of Ashara doing a mythic zero, mythic one, whatever you want to call it. And what was interesting, where are you, bro? Like, you're so far away. How did you get, oh, you're, you're so dead. Oh, you're so lucky that you didn't die from that. <laughs> um, was a mythic zero, right? And... It was horrific. I had to spam my fucking ass off to get us through that dungeon. And I'm not saying I didn't make some mistakes. Of course I made some mistakes. We're still in the learning process together. But um, it was horrible, 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 horrible experience. Now, the comparison I have to that is when I my first ever Eye of Ashara Mythic I ever did was a Mythic Plus 3 with my friends while I was wearing considerably less gear than what I have on this shaman. I'm like 838 on this guy, way less than this. And I we did that without a healer. Accidentally, not not out of like some sort of ego gains or anything like that, but our healer forgot to respec. He's usually shadow. And we did it without a healer, just as many groups are doing very high mythic pluses right now without a healer, right? That's just actually a part of the game right now. If you didn't know that, that is a part of the game. And the reason is, so much of the damage in these dungeons is completely avoidable. Now, what this means is it kind of throws into complete turmoil what you should be doing as a good healer, which is everything I talked about today, which is like being predictive, knowing which trash packs are going to be a problem, when things are going to be dispelled, and kind of ex knowing beforehand when you're going to be using big healing cooldowns, when you might not be, when you shouldn't need them, etc. Once you get into dungeons where things actually hurt, like, this is just a heroic, right? Nothing really is going to struggle as too much. Like, the worst, scariest boss in here is Sapantrix, and that's if everybody does everything wrong, pretty much. Um, once you get into, like, the, the dungeons where these things are going to kill you, so your Mythics and Mythic Pluses, then... It's a horrible, horrible experience if you're playing with bad people. Now, I'm talking generally in the Pug world, and you can obviously find good players in the Pug world as well. I just want everybody to be prepared for that, is you can end up having a very, very stressful experience <coughs> uh, where you shouldn't have one. Because you predictably know when things are going to happen throughout the dungeon because you're a good healer, you can end up in scenarios where people are just randomly getting hammered to death. Uh, oh, they need my help? Sure, I didn't see that. Sure. Um, where people are getting hammered to absolute death and there's nothing you can do about it. You can't predict it going to happen and you just end up in these scenarios like I talked about, which are these desperation moments where you are literally spamming and spamming and spamming and spamming and spamming and it's horrible and it's painful and it's frustrating and it's awful and nobody ever says anything. <coughs> One thing I noticed is, especially if you like having your ego stroked every now and again, healer's not going to be for you. And to expand on that a little, if you have a really fun, uh, really smooth run, then what you'll generally find is that people thank the tank, right? If you have a really fast run, people will generally thank the DPSs. 
people only notice the healer when things go wrong, right? And uh, now, uh, further to that is often that happens. As I said, most of the damage in Legion's dungeons is actually pretty avoidable. I mean, for the most part, uh, it's pretty avoidable. And what you'll find is if people will either take an absolutely horrendous amount of damage and you won't really know why, right? This is often the case. And you won't really know why until after the fact because they shouldn't because you predictably know what's going to happen in this dungeon. Uh, yet this happens... And they either notice, which, you know, not often they do. They might stand in fire or toxic whatever forever, like we saw today. Uh, they might stand in toxic whatever for fucking for days and not realize what's going on. And oftentimes they can even blame the healer for, like, uh, why aren't you healing me? Uh, can you heal, please, right? People actually stop, and many healers will have seen this, uh, is people stop doing what they're doing and type, can you heal me, instead of getting out of the thing that's killing them. But what I also found is that people who do notice that, oh shit, I'm stood in blah, blah, blah. Uh, what they actually do, and I, I didn't get this as a tank, I didn't get it as a dps -er, but it happened quite a lot uh, as a healer, is people whisper you. People whisper you uh, to say, I'm sorry, because they don't want the shame are the perceived shame of the group knowing they made mistakes and being a bad player. Hardly surprising when you look at most LFRs now and the how quick people are to, almost like wolves on a stake, to jump on people who make any mistake and try and kick them. Even the worst of the worst players will be like getting some sort of, I don't know, some sort of vicarious thrill out of kicking people unnecessarily. Which uh, I've, 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 I hate. I absolutely hate that. Was that the world boss or something? Um... I've generally found that as I've endeavoured and I always have endeavoured during these series is to do as much as possible in the pug world, right? So all the mythics I've done so far on my shaman have been pugs, uh, mythic pluses, raids, and so on and so forth that we're going to be looking at in the next few videos. I found it to be a horrible experience. Really, really horrible. To the point where I've really not wanted to do it. And thought, well, have we got... And looking for that point when, like, we hit with our tank, which is when we would started to do plus nines and stuff, where it was like, at this point, we should be playing with friends and not really goofing about in these dungeons. But I haven't hit that point yet by a long shot. <laughs> but I've also been thinking, it's like, this sucks. Playing with randoms, you can get nice groups. There's always that... And again, I'm talking exciting generalizations. But when it goes wrong, the experience is just absolutely stressful and horrible. Uh, so I want you to bear that in mind. We need to bear that in mind. And also, it probably gives some credence as to why people were paying good healers. We laughed about it on the web shows. People are paying thousands of gold for healers to heal their mythic pluses. It actually makes total sense to me now. As much as I've mocked it and said that is fucking ridiculous, it actually makes sense to me. As, uh, if a group of bad players, knowing that they, they're pretty bad and they can't, get through the, they can't get through the dungeon without a healer to literally carry them non-stop, probably will be worth paying for them rather than uh, have the experience of just getting hammered into the ground all the time. So, so it's a very mind. Well, the counter to that, though, is when you are playing with friends and you can do all the cool shit that isn't just spam your fucking dick off constantly at every trash pack unnecessarily, uh, healing is a very rewarding, very fun experience. Really, really fun. Um, so just bear that in mind. I just wanted to tack that on the end. It's something you should be aware of as we move through this series. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you again. Bye-bye.